Taylor, what's up, man? What up, Ross? What are you doing, man? Uh, just working, man. What, how about you? What are you up to? Dude, so I just got off the phone. Got off the phone with our man Dingo. He says it's time. He says we've got, if we can get there in the next uh, week or so, we've got a window, a weather window. He's got a schedule window. I think we can make it happen, go down. He says those big fish are starting to move in. When the weather gets right, they're starting to move in. The temperatures look like they're going to be there. Um, I think we should make a shot at getting down there and fishing with them. Sweet, man. That sounds good to me. Like, I'll start looking at flights, and then we'll figure out uh, what day we can get down there. How long do you think Dingo's got in there? Um, he says, I mean, looking at the weather and looking at his timing, I think we got, a, like, about a 36-hour window to make this happen. And I think the way Dingo's talking, um, I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming now. Oh look, who's with you? Okay, let's stop right there. Let's rewind this a little bit and then set the stage for how all this came together. So in the wintertime, I, uh, I live in the mountains. I live just over the mountain of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And I, you know, I was sitting in my snowcat. I grew him at Grand Target Ski Resort. And I get a phone call from Dingo. Dude, tarpon. But here we are, like, coming up to tarpon season. It's all anyone thinks about that knows anything about them. It's like, once one season's done, you're counting the days to the next season. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're planning, you're tying these flies. We've got a set amount of time to go and do this trip. We don't know if there's going to be fish there or not. There's a little weather window, like when the conditions are right, you just, and you don't know, like the weather, you know, the weather changes. The weatherman predicts the best he can, but you know, I'm sitting in my cat, listening, doing whatever I'm doing, shoveling snow out of my driveway, and all I can think is 80 degrees, tarpon, fly rods, and some of the best dudes on the planet to go chase these fish with. And that's exactly, the, the, the next thing that came across was like camping, tarping, all in. Out of nowhere comes this giant mouth. It just appears around the, on the fly and just inhaling a fly and the sound it makes just as it comes tight and the sound of the water lying through the water, tarping in the air, big explosion. And I mean, all hell breaking loose. Unbelievable. It, it's almost, it's a blur to me. Just the, the, the anticipation of what, what we were seeing, the culmination of this, the culmination of what we've been talking about, what we had been dreaming about, and it was it was unfolding right in front of us. The, all this like unknown in front of me, and just not knowing what's going to happen, or not knowing like all that much about fishing for tarpon and, and uh, these fish and what they are and and the experience of it. And you can watch everything. You can watch every tarpon video online. You can read about them. You can you know see pictures in magazine. Nothing prepares you for these fish at all. Just like that, this massive fish just comes up and just turns on my fly and flashes its whole side and everything just stops.
to be. I'm seeing the odd little flipping thing on the side scan. Nothing outrageous, but I'm not seeing any outrageous feeding right now either. <laughs> good things, Tingo, good things. Good day, buddy. Good dang day.